Welcome back to the News at 10. Let's cross over to Abuja now. Here's Gloria, who is okay. Gloria. Thank you, Ijoma. The governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party in Edo State, Mr. Ize Iyamo, appears dissatisfied with the judgment of the lower courts as he heads to the Supreme Court for justice. The PDP lost at the tribunal and the appeal court to the governor, Mr. Godwin Obasiki, who both courts affirmed as the duly elected governor. The appeal before the Supreme Court has 21 grounds upon which the appellant and his party are standing to demand that Osage Ize Iyamo must be declared winner of the September 28, 2016 governorship election. The Supreme Court has 60 days to consider the appeal and give its verdict. The Assets Management Corporation of Nigeria today took possession of some choice properties in Lagos and Ogun states from three property firms and eight others following an alleged 4.68 billion naira bank debt. The assets, including land, houses, cars and generating plants, were seized in execution of a federal high court order pending the determination of the suit. According to AMCON, it required the 4.68 billion naira non-performing loan that Havila Villas Limited secured in 2006 from the defunct Intercontinental Bank PLC, now Axis Bank, by a loan purchase and limited servicing agreement. Ancon says it also advanced a further loan of 300 million naira to Havila Villas Limited. Both loans have so far not been settled by the debtors. Six suspects standing trial over their involvement in the March 8 communal clash in Ileife, Oshun State, have been granted bail. Justice Kudirat Akano of the Oshun State High Court ruled that each of the suspects must produce shorters that must be either a traditional ruler or a level 14 officer with a valid tax clearance. The shorters are to also deposit 5 million naira each. At least 46 people were killed and several properties destroyed in the clash. Hearing on the matter continues in July 2017. Well, the Minister of Solid Minerals, Dr. Okaude Fayemi, says foreign investors in the nation's mining sector must be prepared to help Nigeria grow economically through their investments. Speaking at the inaugural meeting of the Development Partner Coordination Group in Abuja, Dr. Fayemi said that any foreign investment in the sector must be prepared to help local operations. Dr. Fayemi observed that the sector is growing in spite of the recession as the president has given him the mandate to return the sector to a major revenue earner for the country. We have defined what we want and we've invited development partners to support various aspects of it and they've responded positively. They, they've bought into our vision, they are complementing the work we're doing, they're putting the money where the mouth is and they're supporting the overall uh, agenda. And, and in the short space of a year, uh, we've raised various amounts of money and we're still raising. But it's not just about raising money, it's about adding value and ensuring that this serves the overall interest of the citizens of Nigeria. Because mining, it's about natural resources and the natural resources of Nigeria should serve the Nigerian people. It should not just serve outsiders. We're not averse to foreign investment in the sector, but foreign investment in the sector must help us to grow our sector industrially. It must help us to beneficiate. It must help local processing. It must help import substitution. It must help our backward integration policy. That is the only way that it would be a win-win situation for us and for our foreign friends. The Delta State Governor, Dr. Ifan Yokoa, is asking the local government leadership to brainstorm on ways of ending uh, salary issues in the state. Governor Okoa made this call when he visited two communities in Nugeli South and Uvue local government areas in continuation of his Meet the People tour of communities in Delta State. This is in commemoration of his administration's two years in office. Delegate Converge on this hall at the PTI Conference Center in a forum for the Meet the People tour of communities in Delta State by Governor Ifan Okoa. 
for the governor, the essence of this meeting is to acquaint residents with government programs and to ask how they are affected by them. We cannot feel any presence of the since the inception of the commissioner representing us in Uye. We want to beg that we should be returned back to where we have our voting strength. Well, then we have our voting strength. We don't have anything to do. We, do. we don't vote in any place there. We cannot even vote for you. So please, I want to appeal to you to please order the machinery of government to fill up our salary so that we can enjoy ourselves once more. And we want to request that you establish some of your training centers in this area. Governor Co-op provides explanations for some of the questions raised about salaries, infrastructure, among others. We spend about 7 billion naira every month to pay salaries. And many times, we are at the end of the month, because Nigeria is in recession, we don't even have enough money to pay those salaries. And I don't think that government, the government that is made just to pay salaries only, Without having money for development, it's not a government, obviously not. And therefore, we have felt that there was a need to move away from that. And every available resource, as much as we can, after payment of salary, that we move it, use it appropriately for development of infrastructure and the development of our youths. 13 of the 25 local government areas have so far been visited and the governor promises to interface with the rest of the council areas to find out how best governors can be brought to the grassroots. Well, that's it from the nation's capital. Back to you, Ijoma. Thanks a lot, Gloria. FBN Holdings PLC was at the Nigerian Stock Exchange to present its facts behind the figures concerning the performance of the company. The group managing director, who rung the closing bell, attributed the growth of the FBN Holdings PLC to the visionary leadership of the board and the committed workforce. It's not unusual for companies to pay a visit to the Nigerian Stock Exchange. We are delighted to be here on the floor of the exchange. And what makes this one significant is the expectation of traders and members present to hear the presentation of FBN Holdings PLC. First, the closing bell is rung for the end of the market day, an honor on this occasion reserved for the group managing director of FBN Holdings PLC, Mr. UK AK. In just six months, we've gained nearly 100% in share price. So I think the market is beginning to accept the credibility of the new management. And also, the reforms we're putting in place, the initiatives, we think those levers we have pulled are yielding results. And expectations for the future, he takes the time to explain. We expect a higher ROE at the end of 2017. If you back out the loan loss, expense. Our ROE for 2016 was above 40 percent. That is significant. And so the market will expect cleaner books, a more efficient bank, and more profitable bank. And we think that we've got all the pillars ready from a visionary board and across the operating entities to very sound and knowledgeable management and also the committed workforce. From there to the presentation of the facts behind the figures, which is well received by the Nigerian Stock Exchange. The leadership of FBN Holdings PLC are making it clear that growth is important and sustainable growth more so, consolidating on recent gains in a visionary way for impact of the company on its shareholders, customers, country, and beyond borders. We have a bit more business news. Here's Anne Wilder. You first. First Bank.
Thanks a lot, Ijoma. Nigeria's Securities and Exchange Commission says the amendment on the Investment and Securities Act at the National Assembly will empower the Commission to persecute criminals in the capital market. The Commission's legal director, Mrs. Anastasia Brimo, made this known today. Now the federal government continues to seek for alternative means to enhance its revenue generation drive through the non-oil sector. The latest strategy being channeled through the Ministry of Finance is for Nigeria to make to have a stronger regional presence in Africa. And this was revealed today by the Minister of Finance, Mrs. Kemi Adeosho, at the NSE CEO Roundtable, organized in partnership with Bloomberg. The NSE Bloomberg CEO Roundtable is in its third edition, holding here at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Given its attributes of global reach and worldwide trends, the platform offers policymakers and business leaders the opportunity to deliberate on gray areas of the economy. We're encouraged by the insights that we have been that have been generated from the previous two editions of this event. And I worked with policymakers, regulators, and operators to address key action items such as FX accessibility, double taxation, and ease of doing business. This meeting is graced by the Minister of Finance, Mrs. Kemi Adelshin. She tells capitalists and business executives here how the government is strategizing beyond oil to dominate Africa. So it reinforces the fact that we really cannot afford to rely on oil. We must, must use the oil revenue to generate and to stimulate activity in other areas of our economy. Nigeria has the potential to be regionally dominant. However, central to realizing that potential are three key factors. One is the best value in the deployment of government resources with a focus on enabling infrastructure. Second is partnership with the private sector in service delivery, an extension of the concept that the user pays. And the third is effective revenue mobilization. Frontline economist Dr. Doni Salami picks on the needs to rely on private capital to advance the Nigerian economy. If we don't assign a role to private capital, then we will not protect private capital. If we don't protect private capital, then we will not get private capital. End of story. The Nigerian economy is in a recovery mode from recession, and catalyzing the private sector along with government strategic plans may just be the quantum leap for the needed economic success. Temple Ashaju, Channel Television News. We'll talk a moment now, and when we return, we'll find out how the Nigerian Stock Exchange fared today.